So greetings to everybody that is seeing me from wherever you are seeing me from. Before we do anything today, I want us to pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the word that you have released, O oh God. I pray that you may enlighten somebody's mind as they listen to me. May they listen with a level of clarity in the mighty name of Jesus. May they be shifted in the spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today I'm going to be talking about sin. What is sin? I'm going to be revealing the reality of what sin really is. Now, in my movements, I have hosted a lot of events most of the times where we get to meet youths only. And at some point, we'd ask youths to ask questions. Now, one of the things that I realized is that in, in, in these meetings, there were certain questions that were repeating. And one of those questions were, is masturbation sin? Is homosexuality sin? Now, why are you asking this? You realize that for them to find question in this particular statement of masturbation or homosexuality, it is because they believe or somebody believes that how can masturbation be seen when you are not hurting anybody? How can it be seen when it's not affecting anyone? I'm just playing with myself. But in the actual sense, what this particular individual, what this particular youth is trying to ask is what is sin? So when you understand what sin is, you'll be able to know which kind of act at this particular time is a sin. What am I talking about? When somebody doesn't know the white, the, the color white, they're going to come with the color brown and ask you, is this white? And you keep on saying, no, it is not white. You keep denying every other color that they bring to you as long as it, is, it, it isn't white. So what is this person looking for? They are looking for the actual color white. What does it look like? When you teach somebody how white looks like, they will never come with brown and ask you, is this white? I mean, they already know how white looks like. So when somebody asks, is this, is this thing a sin? It is because they do not really understand what a sin is. Because if you understand what a sin is, you cannot ask if something is a sin or not. For example, there's a very known definition of sin, which is disobedience. All right? People would say sin is disobeying God. And this is a very good definition, except it's not absolute. It is not complete. It is not the complete definition of sin. But don't worry. Today, I'm going to give you the definition of sin. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to enlighten you on what sin really is. Now, you, you are going to find this very spirit lifting because this is a mystery that I'm about to reveal. Now, if sin is not really disobedience, then what is sin? Now, when you go in the Bible, in the book of Genesis 39, you find a story of a man by the name of Joseph. The Bible says that Joseph was asked by the wife to lay with him. All right? The wife wanted to lay with Joseph, but Joseph denied. He refused. And he said to the master's wife, all right? It was the master's wife that wanted to sleep with him. And he refused. He denied. And this is what he said. I cannot sin against my master and I will not sin against God. Now pay attention to this. Joseph lived before Moses and the law was given to Moses. The law wasn't given to Joseph. It was given to Moses and Moses lived after Joseph. So the question I have is how did Joseph know that it is a sin when the law was not yet given to Moses. 
How did Joseph know that what he's about to do is a sin? When the law is not yet out, because you, we have been told that uh, sin is, a, is disobedience. But what is Joseph disobeying when the sin has not yet been given? So there's another definition of sin that we have to find here, which I am here to deliver. So what exactly is sin? I'm going to, in defining sin, bring up the scripture, Romans 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So sin is falling short of the glory of God. Isaiah 43 verse 7 comes in and says, For we have been created to glorify God. So the purpose of the creation of you and I, it is to bring glory to God, to glorify God. Now, to understand really what glory is, I have done a video talking about glory, and there's going to be a link in the description below. So just go there and you will see the same video that is talking about glory. So I'm not talking about glory today. So the scripture says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So an individual, a human being was created to glorify God. The purpose of your creation, the purpose of my creation is to glorify God. Now, every time we do something that does not glorify God, then we are sinning. Remember, God created man in the book of Genesis. He created man in his image. So when he created man in his image, it was to his glory. Now, another question before I go ahead with this that anybody, anyone would ask me now is, how did God pick sins? How can we know that this thing is a sin when it's not in the Bible? How did he pick that murder should, we should say murder is a sin, all right? Uh, Honor your mother and your father. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not uh, commit adultery. How did he pick his sins? How did, what criteria did he use? Now, when God created you and I, he introduced the word of God. He introduced the law to bring out his character in us. He wanted us to be like him. So the word of God was brought now so that we can learn about his character and then begin living like him to his glory. Every single time we live and execute something that is not in his image, then we are sinning. So in other words, sin is failure to move in that which we are supposed to move. So when we are failing to depict the character of God on earth, then we are sinning. Remember, the Bible says to him, who knows to do good but does not do good, it is a sin. How? This person has just has not done anything wrong. They've just decided not to do good. So how can that be a sin when he's not disobeying anything? Like I said, we are supposed to move in the character of God on earth. Then we are not sinning. That is the reason John comes in, first John, sorry, comes in and says that for when we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. How are we deceiving ourselves? Because sin is beyond disobedience. Every single time we are living in a way that does not depict the character of God himself, then we are sinning. So sin is failure to move in the character of God, which he created us to move in. Then we are sinning, all right? So if you know that doing something is the right thing and you do not do it, it is a sin. Why? Because God in his character cannot omit from doing a good thing. Having said that, I want us to understand that sin is not only an action, but it is also omission. So there's sin coming as a result of commission and sin coming as a result of omission. When you omit to do something, failure to do what you are supposed to do is sin. How is it that a sin? How is it a sin? It is because the character of God that we are supposed to depict and live according, accordingly, 
That character we are supposed to move in is the character of God. It's a godly character. So it means now that you cannot move in the character of God and fail to do a good thing. Then you are sinning. So answering the question of masturbation, people have been asking me a lot of questions. What is your say about homosexuality? What is your say about masturbation? These things are sins. Why? Because they are not in the character of God. Why did he say you shall not commit adultery? It is not in his nature to commit adultery. He decided to bring in the honesty and the faithfulness in him and depict it and bring it on to us. So we are supposed to be honest because he's honest, all right? Some people would say, you know, when you're masturbating, nobody else is involved. Nobody else will know about it. Nobody else will know about it. Really? I mean, are you telling me that if somebody cheats on their wife and their wife doesn't find out, then it is not a sin? Of course it is a sin. Why? Because you have just done something that is outside the character of God. So what is sin? Sin is failure to move in the character of God on earth. Failure to move in the in, in the picture that God, in the road, in, 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 in the path that God has set for you and I. When you are sent to buy a certain type of water and you buy water but not the water you are sent to buy the fact that you did not get the water that you are sent to buy means you bought the wrong thing which means that the fact that you have not done what god wants us to do which is to live according to him then you are sinning so there are certain sins that are not in the bible but you will know that it is a sin why because is it in the character of god Is it in his nature to do that? When you ask yourself those questions with conviction of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to know what is a sin and what is not a sin. So in the actual sense, what I'm saying is sin is not only disobedience. Sin is not only disobeying the law. When you disobey the law, yes, you sin, but that is not sin. Sin Disobedience is just another, uh, I would say, it is another branch of what sin is. But that is not entirely sin. So Joseph knew that sleeping with his master's wife is a sin. Not because there was a law that was there to guide him in what and what not to do. But because he understood, is it in the character of my father in heaven to sleep with The master's wife? Of course not. So it is a sin. With this you will understand now there's no need for you to go look for a servant of God, to go look for a man of God, to go look for an individual that you think and feel has gone before you, that you feel in their idiosyncratic manner have done a lot of research about the Bible, asking them, say, is this a sin? No, ask yourself, is it in the character of God to do that or not to do something? When you ask yourself that and you have the Holy Spirit in you, you will be able, you will be able, I repeat, you will be able to understand. Is what I'm about to do is a sin or not? Why? Because you've understood. To say sin is actually moving out of the purpose that God created you and I for. So why did God create you? God created you for his glory. It means that everything that you and I do should bring glory to God. It means that we have to move in his glory. It is when we do not move in his glory that we are sinning. It is when you do something that is outside the character of God that you are sinning. You don't need somebody to tell you that this is in the Bible or this is not in the Bible. That is the reason in as much as there are people that have not read, that have not read the entire Bible. They have not read the whole Bible, but they're able to know this is a sin. This is not a sin. How? It is because you will have to ask yourself, is it in God's nature to steal, 
Is it in God's nature to commit adultery? Is it in God's nature to masturbate? You don't have to offend somebody to sin, no. You just have to move outside your purpose. Then you have sinned. And that is exactly what sin is. Sin is you missing the mark. What mark is it? You failing to move in your purpose. You failing to move in the character that is godly. Then you are sinning. I will answer a lot of question. I have answered a lot of question about sin just right now. I know there's something that you have been doing and you have convinced yourself somehow that it is not a sin. You have convinced yourself that it is okay. Moreover, you're not offending anybody. Moreover, you are not hurting anybody. It is still a sin if it is not dis- de- it, if it is not uh, depicting the image of God, the character of God. It is still a sin. Child of God, are you depicting the character of God? And I am praying for you right now. Because I know it is not easy, so I am praying for you right now that you may have the strength to understand what really is in the character of God. I am praying for you that you can begin to understand what it is to move in his glory. It is then when you find it is only then rather that you finally move in righteousness. Now somebody can ask me again that where does Christ come in in all this? I mean if I can just depict the character of God where is Christ coming in? That is where Christ actually comes in because there are certain things that you might not know that are the character of God but you are not doing them. So which means you are sinning. But the good news for you and I is that Christ became sin for you and for me that we might be righteousness. All right? Which means now that Christ is bearing my sin. He died for me. Now, in finishing this, I want to tell you a story. There's a certain time that there was a certain king. This king lived with the mother. Now, there's a certain time as the king lived with the mother in the palace that he started losing eggs. Every time he lost eggs, so he called his servants and asked them, "Who's been stealing my eggs?" And the king did not re- the, the servants did not reveal himself all herself they kept denying so he said whoever will be caught stealing eggs their hand will be cut off immediately so one particular day a king the king went to do uh, his daily stuff outside the palace and then he heard the bell ring to symbolize or rather signify that the thief has been caught so he came back running to see who the thief was and when he came back this time he found it was actually his mother that was caught stealing the eggs and he asked the mother why have you been stealing eggs why this is my palace i could have given you anything you wanted you could have just asked and i would have given it to you but anyway i am a man of my word so your hand must be cut off immediately and the people that were preparing were to cut the hand off had already done that so the mother of the king was sent there and the hand was put there to be cut off and before the knife could just cut the hand off the king pushed the mother and put his hand there and the king's hand was cut off it is exactly what Christ did for you and I remember for the wages of sin is death but you and I cannot die because Christ died for you for those sins that you have committed those sins that you were committed Jesus died for you my goodness it is so amazing to know and to understand that Jesus died for you and I just as the king moved away the mother Jesus moved us away and he placed himself right where we were supposed to be 
and got our punishments for us. That is sin. Now remember, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, just hit the subscription button and you can also hit the notification bell. I'm going to be uploading even more spirit-filled sermons for you so you can be lifted and spirit-filled. In Jesus' name, God bless you. This is your brother and friend, the Ephraimite Chapanga Siwelo. Thank you.